And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Armata Strigoi, a, a cooperative game in which you play a group of werewolf clerics taking out some vampire type things. Now, I did not know, so after I played the game and looked it up, uh, this is an adventure with Power Wolf. Okay, so the Power Wolf. Apparently Power Wolf is a power German metal band. Uh, and I went and watched some of their videos online, and this is their thing. Very gothic, very we are werewolves fighting vampires type things. All right, cool. So if you're a fan of the band, you probably already own this game. If you're not, you're just looking for a game, let's take a look at the game itself. Like I said, a cooperative game. Here we go. You're going to build this room here. This is randomly placed, these different spots here. Uh, the wolves, each player is going to pick a wolf. You're going to get all the cards for that player, which are different action cards. Uh, the action cards are fairly similar, although they're not the same. You might have the same card someone else has, but you, you know, each of the characters has various cards depending on who they are. Uh, each round of the game, your, your goal is to take out these Strigoi here. And there are two of them, although once you take out one of them, they have a certain number of hit points on them, then the other one becomes a supreme. They'll turn over and they just get really mad, I guess, and yell a lot. Um, as And then once the one becomes a supreme, you, they also start blowing up different sections here, and so as this, this place starts getting destroyed. When players die, or various times, what will happen is players are going to get blood points, and you need to get blood points. You need to kill different creatures. You get enough blood points on the altar, then you can directly attack these things here. But if they get blood points here on this kind of apocalyptic-looking card, they get enough there, then players are going to lose. Play is pretty simple. Each round of the game, players are going to play a card. You're going to look at initiative to see the order of that. You're going to be able to move. Uh, possibly the special abilities here, uh, go through an enemy, you know, heal, different things will happen to bit based on the cards that you play. But movement is just pretty much moving around on these things. You can move up on these platforms. There's ways that these platforms can be rotated. The reason there's letters on these platforms is because after all the wolves have moved, we'll flip over one of these and it's going to determine the, sometimes the letters will determine which way the Strigoi is going to be moving around the board because they're going to come after you and attack you. But as players move, they're going to land on different encounter tokens here. There's red and gray ones. Uh, one is more difficult than the other, and you'll be turning these over, and these are just little monsters that you'll fight. Or you might even find a monk who can be helpful to you. And as long as the card that you played when you play these movement, has enough power to defeat it, you're fine. When you defeat these, sometimes you'll get little reward tokens, or sometimes you'll also get to draw a reward card from here, which will get you better weapons. You're going to need these weapons if you're going to fight the Strigoi. Sometimes they're melee, sometimes you uh, have to discard them to use them. This dynamite gives you plus six, but you're, it's a one-time use. And so these can be beneficial to you. There's also three extra cards that players can get the first time you're wounded. You'll take one of these, and these cards will be added to your hand. Now that sounds really, really basic, and that's because the game, to some degree, is fairly basic. Everyone's going to pick a card each round of the game. You'll play them. The lowest initiative goes first. You move the monsters around, trying to defeat them. And after you fight, then you'll be turning over the action token for the Strigoi, moving them around. They might attack, and then you just keep going, um, and then... Eventually, if all your cards that you've played are used up, you'll be drawing them back into your hands. One of these cards will let you bring them back into your hand, and eventually the players will defeat both of the Strigoi, or they will lose. Component-wise, the miniatures are okay. I mean, I think it's funny to see the werewolves wearing, you know, your typical... Uh, you know, there's, they're all a bunch of clerics. They're all werewolf clerics. Uh, I had a problem with the Strigoi because one's big, one's small. And the actual cards themselves, I really can't tell you the difference between which one is which. 
Apparently they don't need eyes to see, but that was a minor thing. The artwork is fine. When I saw these guys online, it looks just like them. So if you're a fan of the band, I suppose you'll love this artwork. Very, very grim, darky, gloomy, gothic feel to it. The board itself is where I have my problem. These are just, this is boring. It's a boring castle. These things are on raised platforms for no reason at all. Although if you're not careful, like this one here, I'm, I'm gonna have to glue that one together because they don't stick in the platform. And these are here just for you know rotating purposes, but this whole thing just, you have these spots and these spots, and that's it. It, it could be anything, there's no, there's nothing that gives this castle any sort of flavor. Um, lots and lots of tokens included with the game, and there, there's a little bit of color there, but and the symbology isn't tremendously difficult to remember what everything does. There's just a few, and they're in the rule book. Uh, uh, some cards that had this information probably would have been useful. But, yeah, I don't know if I'm that impressed with the components. Fans of the band will probably be happy here. But as a gamer, I'm kind of like, eh, eh, it's okay at best. Now, the idea of having cards from your hand and you play them and you take the actions on them and you pick them up, that's one of my favorite mechanisms for a game. And, it, you know, there's this strong theme in there and stuff, but the, the castle itself, the game is just really boring. At the beginning, you move around, you flip over a random token, you defeat it or not, you get some gear. Meanwhile, you're sithing there. I guess you could work together, but it's so mathy. Like, all right, I'm going to play a lower initiative, and then this trigger is going to move this direction, and then after he moves that direction, he might attack you. So hopefully you're playing a good defense card, and then he's going to move. Oh. Ah, it's just There's nothing there. It's just there's no real excitement. There's no climatic. You're just in this this cat so whooping up on these minor characters and having the major ones beat on you until you can defeat them there's no real chance so i mean i mean other than flipping over the tiles which is just crazy lucky and also flipping over destroy and goy tokens because they're just moving around randomly to some degree or which one's activating and but the cards themselves i don't know there's no sense of excitement in the game i mean that cover looks really exciting you know, these werewolves are storming the castle, but I never felt that. This could have been themed any which way, and I don't know that it would have changed that much. Like I said, there's some good concepts here. Having these big cards with multiple icons, getting cards when various things happen to you. The first person to get wounded gets a card. The first person to wound the Strigoi gets a card. All that stuff's interesting, but then when it comes to actual gameplay and this rotating castle stuff, yawn. I've seen that before, and here it doesn't do anything other than slightly change the number of spaces you have to move on any given turn. So this feels like a somewhat of a wasted opportunity. I would hesitate to call the game bad, but in a very crowded genre of many, 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 many cooperative games, many games with vampires in them too, this doesn't really seem to appeal to anybody unless maybe you're a fan of the band. So, yeah, yeah, I know it's not the kind of, <laughs> you know, it's a very ho-hum ending there, but I just have no desire to go back and do any more with this because when you ask me about the game, a lot of cooperative games, I'll say, oh man, on the sixth turn this happened here. I'm like, yeah, we played cards for a while. We eventually killed one of them, then the other got more powerful, but... And I remember at the very end, someone threw dynamite, killed him. That was exciting. One shining moment in the game, but not enough to bring me back to it again. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower of Judgment. If you're a fan of the band, otherwise, it's kind of boring.